Hello everybody, welcome back to another video and you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be a video about uh, who will get the most snow this winter. Now, uh, this may seem like if I am, you know, many people, many other YouTubers have done this video, um, but originally this was my idea and no, there's nothing wrong with them copying. I'm just letting you guys know because it may seem as if it's getting redundant and uh, it may seem I'm copying. I did this already for the past four years, so, you know, <laughs> this is, I think, it's fifth, four, fourth or fifth year that I'm making this video in a row, so consider subscribing, guys, consider liking the video, uh, it, it's, uh, it's interesting this year, we could be looking at some uh, heavy snow across areas where it's, it's just gonna be interesting, so stay tuned, consider subscribing, consider liking the video, and let's just jump right into this. So first off, uh, consider subscribing to this channel again, um, but uh, let's look at the Enzo outlook right now. So the Enzo neutral is most likely to continue through the Northern Hemisphere Spring 2020. This was updated the 12th of September, but uh, <clears throat> the text maybe was, or um, it, this was... You can see the graph was actually updated um, a couple days ago in October, the second Thursday of October. So right now it's Sunday, the Thursday just passed, that's when it was updated. And you can see, even though this says updated 12th of September, it's basically very new. And you can see uh, right now they have 85% chance, uh, 75, uh, 65, 50, and then just maintains that 50 throughout a good portion of the year. So, you know, what does that mean? And uh, basically why you know why will this impact our winter well first off um i want to show you that the enzo neutral winter pattern looks something like this so this uh there's a lot of correlations as to why this happens but the main thing i want to talk about in this video is you know what are the impacts not necessarily why this occurs but you could see there's a polar jet stream which not all the time uh, gets down into the southern U.S. You know, I mean, like not in all winters. Like we have winters where the average for the polar jet stream is, you know, something like this. And only these locations really get that much cold. And once in a while it dips down. But you can see with an Enzo neutral, this isn't just like a snapshot of like uh, the winter. This is kind of like... Well, it sort of is, but it's kind of like the average, like what the polar jet stream would be doing through most of the winter time. You can see they have it dipping through uh, into the mid south, really, uh, and not really affecting m parts of the northwest. Th though the northwest with this Pacific jet stream would get a lot of rain and a lot of precip, a lot of snow for the areas that you know uh, really. Uh, are higher elevated and don't need really below average temperatures to see snow. But then notice how also pretty warm across the south and wet. But the thing is that, you know, the south may or may not be cold, but they could be very snowy despite it not being too awfully cold all the time. So here's the thing, guys. Um, if you look at the south, uh, basically wet and warm conditions, you know, that's not really good for snow. But if this polar jet stream gets oriented, you know, kind of a little bit further to the south and takes a huge dip, which we've seen already happening this year a couple of times, and this occurs... And we still have these wet and warm conditions pushed kind of um, to be met with this cold. And this could, you know, spawn like a snowstorm. And when this cold and uh, wet, you know, conditions overlap, then that will produce snow, not really rain. And then this could ride up the northeast coast or, you know, depending on a jet stream, in this case, it would be out the coast. But some, you know, would be actually going along the coast and producing lots of snow for the northeast. So not only would this be snowy for the south, snow for the northeast, but also possibly snowy for the Midwest with Alberta Clippers. Now, in my final uh, snowfall forecast, I did not put the south as seeing really that much snow. Um, it was just... I'll, explain it and uh, at the end um but uh it's just uh because people sometimes get a little bit confused by that so i decided to leave it up but um basically let's uh, go forward and this is my u.s winter forecast so uh, this is not you know a winter forecast video but i wanted to include my winter forecast to show you what i think will be occurring for the u.s so you have a better idea of you know what where i think the heaviest snow will be you could see for the northwest i have possible cold because the reason for that is basically uh the, the neutral pattern would you know most likely mean the cold reserve to the eastern u.s but with the pattern we've been seeing uh, <clears throat> and the variables other variables that have been occurring 
the Northwest may end up being pretty chilly this year, and, uh, you know, with the possible cold and with that Pacific jet stream just plowing in, we may see quite a bit of snow for the Northwest. So that's, that's you know, that's a good thing for the snow lovers. Now look at the Midwest, Arctic Blast, along with Arctic Blast, usually there's some sort of disturbance that brings it with it, uh, brings the Arctic Blast with it. So that may, uh, you know, produce quite a bit of snow as well, some snow showers, um, snow disturbances, and those on, compiled on top of each other may end up with quite a bit of snow. You can see snow and cold across the uh, the Midwest, kind of going through the upper plains and into the Northeast. And this basically is uh, what I think is where, you know, possibly the most snow will be occurring across these areas where, you know, like ridiculous amounts of snow may be occurring. Uh, and Northeast really quite as well, especially the coastal areas may be seeing uh, a, a ton, a ton of snow. Maybe not too cold, like the Midwest, but a ton of snow, which I think is better. Many people would rather take snow over cold. And now, let's look at the chili plus snow. We notice how right here, I have a good uh, area that is uh, in the south that's chili and snowy. I just decided to, you know, put this chili and snowing because of that those neutral pattern breaks. Those neutral pattern <laughs> jet stream, I meant to say, could sometime, uh, sometimes get really far into the... Uh, southern U.S. and that could, you know, bring uh, snow if it's like January and we see an Arctic blast up here, polar vortex, it gets chilly enough down here below 32 degrees where we could see some snow here, um, you know. It doesn't even necessarily have to be a polar vortex, just a stronger outbreak. And that could happen several times throughout the year and even if you get a, a big one snowstorm in the south, that could already be like, you know, that could already be like a record-breaking uh, a, a scenario. So, uh, then the south, uh, further south is like a battleground, kind of between the warm and the wet, or the warm and the cold, and then the wet, I think the southernmost portions of, uh, the south will just rather remain wet, not necessarily, uh, snowy, or, you know, maybe they'll get a few snowflakes, but usually those locations, they'll see snow. But, uh, if you look at the warm and, uh, and the warmer, and the kind of the orange and the yellow by California and the southwest, I think it'll be rather warmer across those locations. And that's what it seems in the future. Uh, the long range models are already showing that, so I'm pretty confident they won't be seeing too much snow. And then this is my temperature outlook, as you can see, the California, Nevada, and Utah, and um, New Mexico, Arizona, those locations are all seeing uh, orange colors, which means above average temperatures. And uh, I included a little bit of warm for these locations. I'm not too sure about that. This may or may not be, you know, this may throw people off because I'm putting white you know, or uh, yellow contrast or yellow colors, which may mean above, which means above average temperatures. But sometimes, you know, this, even though it may be a little bit warmer overall, I think a couple of times you could get a dip in the jet stream that could bring really cold conditions and that could really possibly produce snow for the southeast. So I just kind of limited this color to uh, the extreme southeast, not expanding it into the south. And then the northwest, um, if I were to remake this graph, I would expand it to them as well. And this is my snowfall outlook in my winter forecast. This is what I this is what I think, you know, this is where I thought the most snow uh, probability, the highest probability of seeing snow is. And you can see it's across a good portion of the east, but it wasn't really specific, so I made a second one. And you can see this is what I think uh, will be happening. So this is obviously for the year 2019-2020. And <clears throat> notice how far these pink colors uh, I put, or these pink colors, that's where it's going to be the most snowy. And here, here's my reasoning as to why the northeast will be the, uh, you know, in the pink color. Well, I think coastal snow storms, nor'easters, could bring plenty of snow for these areas, increasing it to, like, way above average for these locations. The pink here, Alberta Clippers, guys, I think that's going to be a reoccurring thing. Just it's going to be one after the other after the other, so we may see very snowy conditions for these areas. The purple is still above average, you know, pretty much strongly above average, just not as much as a pink, but still... Uh, a good chunk of the real estate so if you lived in this purple and your average was like 40 and you, know, you could be getting 60 or 70 easily this winter and same goes for the northeast those nor'easters will still continue to pack a punch right there and then uh the darker blue uh, right here and right here that's kind of like the you know still above average maybe a little less than you know the purple one 
So if you live in like in Wisconsin and you see, uh, you know, 60 inches of snow on an average winter, you might be seeing 70, 75 with this. So, you know, quite, uh, you already look, you know, still above average. If you live in Chicago, your average is right around like 40. I think it's like 36, that official one. But you'll probably be seeing close to like 50 or maybe 55, 60, you know, if you're really lucky. So uh, that is that. And if you look at parts of the... The, the darker blue that is just that's you know slightly above average snowfall I think um though this could definitely you know expand and switch around this is not really like uh exact so like if you're living across oh I live in a purple almost a dark blue so I'm gonna see way above it yeah you know like this you know this is not like you like uh error proof or this is not like fail proof this is definitely not gonna be how it's gonna end up looking like maybe there's gonna be some similarities. I think, especially with those Alberta Clippers and Nor'easters, but, um, you know, I, I, I'm just, is kind of like more for the fun of it, but I definitely think that overall, these areas will see above average, just exactly where it's going to be tough to see, but, um, you notice I also have the Northwest and above average conditions in parts of the South as well, um, I think, and that little bit of Florida right there, I think they may see a couple of snow showers, you know, maybe up to like an inch or two, possibly, so that, that would be, That'd be a thing. That'd be really interesting. So, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. See y'all. Bye.